Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is written by an anonymous poet, often referred to as the Pearl Poet, because of another text this poet had written. This is said to be the best example of a work in the Romance tradition. Um, this is said to be for a couple of reasons. One, number one, because of the alliteration. Number two, because of the style. Um, the style of the poem, if you look at each stanza, um, you have the, the complete stanza followed by what's called a bob and a wheel. The bob is the one or two words followed by the quatrain, uh, the four lines, which is called the wheel. And, and that's consistent throughout. But one of the other reasons why this poet is said to have written such a good example of a work from the Romance tradition is because of the three games this poet chose to include in this text. The three games are this. We have the beheading game, the exchange of winnings game, and the Temptation by the Hostess game. And I'd like to look for just a moment at those three games and see where we find them in this text. The first is the beheading game. The beheading game is found uh, pages two, or I'm sorry, line 278 through line 299. When the Green Knight comes in, the Green Knight uh, offers a challenge. He says he does not ask for a fight. He says, in faith, now I tell thee, but beardless babes are about on this bench. Were I hasped in my armor and high on a horse, here is no man to match me. Your might is so feeble, so I crave but a Christmas game at court. And if you go down a few lines, he says this. He says, to dare stiffly strike one stroke for another. One stroke for another. What that means is I'm going to um, use my weapon against you. You will use your weapon against me. Um, he says to do this, you know, if, if uh, he will give this gisarm, this rich ass, uh, axe as a gift to him, heavy enough to handle as he pleases. Bear as I sit, I shall bide the first blow. If the knight be so tough as to try what I tell, let him leap to me lightly, I leave him this weapon. So he says, I will take the first blow. I will offer my neck first and you will take the axe and chop off my head. So he says, and if, if you succeed, I'll give you this weapon. And he says this, he says, um, uh, if you go down a few lines, he says, um, his stroke here, firm on this floor, I shall suffer this boon if thou grantest me the blow with another to pay. So with this blow that, this, uh, that your knight will strike upon me, um, I will have the opportunity to pay with another blow. It says, yet, his rest, yet let his respite be a twelfth month and a day. So let his rest between him striking me and me striking him be twelve months and one day. So that's considered the beheading game. The beheading game has a couple of characteristics specific to it. Um, we see an outsider coming into a court, um, offering this game for play. Uh, the hero accepting the challenge, the hero giving the outsider the first blow, thereby cutting off his head, and then there's a period of time that lapses between, and then the hero journeys to the court of the outsider, the outsider tests the hero, and the hero accepts the return blow and returns home. So that's the beheading game. Fun game, one I might not suggest at parties. Uh, the next game that we see in this text is the exchange of winnings game. The exchange of winnings game is found on lines between lines 1104 and 1108. Uh, this is when Sir Gawain arrived at uh, the castle, uh, Bertilac's castle, and Bertilac proposes this game. He says, and more, said the man, let us make an agreement. Whatever I win in the wood shall be yours, and what chance you shall meet shall in mine exchange, or shall be mine in exchange. Sir, let so strike our bargain and swear to tell truly what e'er fortune brings, whether it be whether it bad, sir, or better. So what he's saying is, um, Bertilac is saying, okay, Gwen, you're going to stay in the castle during the day. You need to rest. You're getting ready to see the Green Knight. Uh, so I understand that the men and I are going to go hunting in the woods. Whatever we happen to catch, we will bring home and give to you. But, Gawain, whatever you happen to come upon in the castle or whatever you happen to obtain, you need to give to me. And what we see is we see this exchange of winnings. We see three days, um, three days of, of hunting. We see the men going out earning and they capture a deer. Um, and at home, Gawain receives one kiss from the lady. So they exchange. 
The men give Gwen the deer and Gwen gives Bertilac the kiss. The second day we have the boar. The hunters go out, they return with the boar to give to Gwen. Gwen that day has received two kisses from the lady, so he gives Lord Bertilac two kisses. On the third day, a fox is hunted, and the hunters bring home a fox to present to Sir Gwen. And Sir Gwen has won three kisses, and he's also won a green sash, but he keeps the sash hidden. So when the hunters present Gwen with the fox, Gwen only presents uh, Bertilac with three kisses. Uh, he keeps that hidden. That's considered the exchange of winnings game. The characteristics of the exchange of winnings um, is essentially the host offers the guest dominion over his castle, and the guest offers in return to do anything that will please the host. Um, the host offers the hunt game, whereas at home there's a, usually a different type of hunt going on within the palace. Um, so that's the idea of the exchange of winnings game. The last game in this text is the temptation by the hostess. We see the temptation by the hostess on lines uh, 1229 through 1239. And in this text we see it is when um, Sir Gwen is in bed for those three days during the exchange of winnings game and the hostess comes in and tempts Gwen. Uh, the temptation by the hostess, I want to read this, uh, because of the laws of chivalry and courtly love, the knight must do whatever a lady asks, but also keep the promise to the host. So the knight is to uphold the ethics of courtesy. He is to uphold um, the ethics of you know not touching uh, the woman in a sexual manner. Um, he's presented with a series of tests to prove his moral virtue in this temptation game. So let's look at those. Um, it's line 1229, and the temptation game is this. Here we have Lady Bertilac presenting uh, to Sir Gawain this challenge. She says, you're here, truly, and none but we two. Now at this point, she's come in the room on day one. The men are away at the hunt, and she says, you're here. He's in bed. She came in early in the morning. We're he you're here truly, and none but we too. My lord and his followers far off have fared. Other men remain in their beds, and my maidens. The door is closed, secured with a strong hasp. Since him who delights all I have in my house, my time as long as it lasts, I with talking shall fill. My body's gladly yours. Upon me work your will. So she's essentially offering herself to the knight. Um, in the temptation game. She's offering herself to Sir Gawain. That is a test of his chivalry, a test of his courtesy. It also plays into the concept of uh, courtly love, which I could talk for two hours on courtly love, but in a nutshell, courtly love is um, a knight who is uh, enamored with a lady. The husband of the lady knows of the knight, and the knight cannot uh, breach uh, the bonds of the relationship, of the marital relationship. Um, he might offer her poems, he might offer her gifts, he'll listen to her and give her attention, um, but he will not act impurely or unvirtuously toward her. So the three games that we see in this text, we see the beheading game, the exchange of winnings game, and the temptation by the hostess. And because all three of those are contained in one medieval text, it's said that this is the highest example of a text in the Romance tradition.